Hey guys, so uh, welcome back to the garage. Um, today's going to be a bit different. It's really not going to be anything like, uh, I'm, I'm not making anything today. Uh, today I'm going to be just showing you like the stuff that uh, has changed in the garage and all of that um, that I alluded to in the last episode. And obviously, I mean, you can tell I'm filming this at the same time as I filmed the intro and outro of the last video. Um, so yeah, a lot of things have changed, um, things have changed around, things are still just as messy as ever, uh, so you guys don't have to worry about that, uh, and don't focus on that in this video either, because it might just drive you insane just looking around, it's, it's my mess though. Um, and also another thing is, uh, pretty soon, or, you know, pretty soon, it might not be uh, Caleb's garage projects anymore because there, there, uh, there won't be a garage to have Caleb's garage projects in um, because we'll be moving, which is upsetting um, to say the least. And I'm not gonna have any garage to uh, to have stuff that you're gonna see in this video and uh, though it'll probably be in like a basement or most of my tools might be in an attic or a basement or whatever I can find really to make my workshop again and uh, you guys will be introduced to that it, it won't matter but it's going to be quite the difference going from this huge ma just massive garage to um, probably multiple rooms designated for different things and I mean I'm getting older older um, and you know not gonna be not gonna be there for too awful long probably like let's let's hope not anyways uh, so a, a couple years is probably all it's gonna be it's not like I'm probably going to be able to afford a house with a garage to put it on anyways. So, um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it then. But, yeah, I'll, I'll show you all the stuff that's new. And, um, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, I gotta say. Pretty nice. So, yeah, uh, let's go to the first thing. So, um, this is the first thing. This is, uh... This is a lathe, a metal lathe. So, I think it's pretty nice. It, it's small compared to the ones I'm using at BOCES, but it's, it fares pretty well. Let's see, I'll turn it on right here. It's pretty nice. You got the carriage, you got the head stack, you got the tail stack, it's got shaft light up here. It's got coolant, uh, the chip pan. I had to get the, uh, you know, the drilling head for the tail stack on here. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. We got my, my tool holder, small little compound rest. Um, yeah, and we got power feed too here. I'll, I'll show you that. Just gotta turn it on. Pretty fancy stuff. It's got, you know, your, your little threading stuff over here, which is, you know, pretty much how fast the power feed goes. Uh, but it's really for making threads. Uh, threads per uh, inch, feeds in thousands, you know, nice. It's nice because it's not metric, you know. Uh, the only complaint are the dials. You can't really change the dials to to set your zeros or anything. You really gotta just pay attention to that, which sucks. Um, and then there's no dial on your. Um, would this be your X axis? I don't know the axes for lathes. It's got storage down here. 
it's pretty nice. This is uh, all the original tooling or tool holders that came with it. You know, like your tool posts, your tool holders, knurling attachment, uh, parting tool. Um, this is for this is your thread dial that you would just put up here. Different gears for um, changing the speed. This is where I keep all my tools. These tools which are too big for me to run as of right now. And then everything all organized. We got my you know center drills. We got my raised carbide bits, my indexable carbide bits, and my high speed steel bits with some assortment of Allen wrenches, my calipers, and down here the big stuff, we got my um, my indicator, flex shaft indicator, we got this which holds the flex shaft indicator, this, uh, this back plate, um, this for turning in between centers, being the original box for the um, the the South Bend, um, which is the brand for the lathe vice chuck. I mean, this down here is a tool post grinder. So this goes in the tool post and can grind very precisely uh, different measurements onto the piece that you're working on. I got the original tailstock down here. Fortunately, this tailstock isn't adjustable for its um, side to side, which is quite unfortunate because this is a pretty nice tailstock. Actually, you got your your um, gauges over here. You know, it's pretty nice clamping. You don't need to tighten a bolt every time. Uh, a much better um, spindle lock, I guess you'd call it. It's very heavy. Over here, you got your um, your on-off switch, uh, your forward and reverse for the spindle, and then down there's the motor, which is uh, you know all that good stuff. You put slack in it by this lever over here. And um, yeah, it pretty much engages it. This is where you change your your belts as well uh, for different speeds. Over here we got uh, your carriage stop oilers. This is um, forward reverse for the power feed and or neutral. Up here we got your um, the, the, the gears. Uh, this is how you put it into the low range right here you just pretty much engage another gear ratio into it and then this is um just free so you can move the spindle but it won't actually turn on oh and this is the slack for uh turning on the uh or engaging the belt and uh yeah it's it's a south bend lathe this is your other machine or my other machine that i got it's absolutely massive. It's a, uh, a tree, a tree mill, or you know, tree tools and die works, or tool and die works. Yeah, tree tool and die works. That's, that's what it says right here. This is a giant mill. It's it's quite impressive. Uh, I got this Bridgeport milling vise on it. Unfortunately, the, um, the switch up here doesn't work, but I got some variable frequency drives on the other side, which engage the spindle as well as the uh, the power feed that I'll show you in a second. So, um, yeah, it's got everything that you pretty much need on it. Uh, you got your, your T-slots, which, uh, you know, it's for putting on the vise. Uh, your coolant drainage, uh, coolant adaptable for flooding your table, 
um, power feed for your spindle. So this, if you engage this, it'll um, make the spindle go down as long as you have your a belt that's up here, which I don't because I don't need to drill very many holes or go a certain depth or anything. Uh, but you'd be able to then set your height or speed of feeding with this little knob right here, uh, which goes off of pressure on this pulley. Uh, I'll move you guys closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So this here's how you engage the power feed. This is the speed of the power feed. You'd have a belt going in between there and it would uh, pretty much just drive it so that the spindle goes down. Right here we got my, what would this be? Oh yeah, so you would loosen these two bolts and then you would use, I believe it's this guy, and uh, crank it and it would tilt the head of the mill either which way. Quite, quite fascinating. Um, going along with that sort of theme, if you see this guy right here, um, it's got a bit of play in it, but you would loosen up the bolts that are right there, put this on it, and it will rotate the head this way, which, again, quite fascinating. Over here, Man, professional camera angles, am I right? Loosen up these bolts, use the handle right here. It'll make the neck move in this axis. Down here, you can see all the angles marked on this. So this is 40, 30, 20, 10, zero. You would put this guy on this and it'll rotate the head going this way as well as the neck. So sitting high and mighty up there, we got my my display for my RPM. This lever right here has is the low and high range adjustment. Your little oil indicator, I guess you would call it. This is how you determine your speed. So yeah, you adjust this guy here and it moves that little thing in there up or, or down. And it's really difficult because it's a a pulley for up inside the head uh, so you'd sort of have to move the spindle with it um, behind this giant precision machine tools tree tree tool and die works um, is a giant gear that helps with the power feed yeah uh, this is your spindle stop so you sort of just choose how low you want it to go this is your actual um, your, for your spindle depth uh, if you're say like drilling a hole or something and then down here down here we got your my table height. I made this little coupling thing with this dowel pin in there to fit for the handle. We got some very nice clear, um, you know, little marks on there telling me my depth and, and thousandths. This here is uh, my my table movement going this way, so that way and that way. I just use this wrench until I can actually make myself a handle for it. Up here is my power feed engaging, so I just move it that way or that way. That moves the table this way or that way. This is the actual power feed motor, so this is how I select my power feed speed, so this would be seven inches per minute. This would be, you know, three fourths of an inch per minute, one and three eighths, two and three eighths, four, seven. Uh, this is my rapid traverse, so if I pull this up, I'm pretty sure it'll go around 75 inches per minute, um, which is moving. Over here we got, you know, my variable frequency drives right up there, and uh, that's what I use to turn on the spindle, so I would press this green button down here, which you guys probably can't see, and if you listen... turns on the spindle. This one over here turns on the power feed. That's my mill. It's a pretty, pretty heavy piece of machinery, honestly. 
can see that there's some store storage over there. Uh, there used to be a door on it that fell off. We don't know where it is. Um, the way I got this was it was in like many pieces. So the base is one piece and that's like just solid. Well, not solid, but very thick cast iron. Um, then we got that little torpedo thing which holds the thread that makes the table go up and down. We got that piece uh, which has the threads inside of it to make the table go this way and that way. The table which has, uh, yeah, obviously you put your vise on there but it has the thread that makes it go that way. Um, so those were all different pieces. Then you got uh, the coupling which is right there with all the little angles on it. The neck. Uh, and then the spindle head, got the motor slash gear, or the gearbox, and then the motor up there. Uh, and then obviously the power feed motor over there. Um, one thing that you can see is that's my up and down lock. Uh, there's some various um, table locks over on that piece. And yeah, the thing weighs a crap ton. When I got it, it was, it had a lot of surface rust on it, so I was out here multiple nights, like for a week, um, with an angle grinder with a wire wheel attachment, just going to town on literally every single mating surface on there, and it was, it was crazy, um, but honestly it cleaned up so well. And it works, it works really well as well. Luckily the spindle was kept in a different garage and it didn't have nearly as much rust on it. Uh, especially inside of the spindle, near the quell or quill or whatever. Um, it, it wasn't rusty like at all, so very thankful for that. Very, very, very reasonable price. Like insanely reasonable price as well, so yeah. It, it, it works pretty good uh, only complaints the VFDs sort of one of them kaput I just got to change today so yeah over here we got my messy desk obviously it's messy down there we got my toolbox where I keep uh, or I'm starting to keep most of my machining tools and stuff I cleaned that out it was probably the first time in like seven years um, and then over there we got storage for multiple things so I'll go over and set you up over there. So down here we got my polisher, we got my um, roller mill, another polisher back there, a little allen key box and uh, that's a drill bit box, my two work boxes or bags and then back there if you can see it that's all my round stock uh, for my lathe and then back over there again is just random assortments of non-round uh, pieces of metal. So yeah, that's um, that's my two big new machines that are they're honestly just so exciting. I love using them. BOCES, that's pretty much the two main things that we use. Uh, obviously it covers a whole big range of stuff that you can do. One of them does stuff that's round and the other one does you know things that are square and it it, it really opens up a lot of possibilities for stuff that you can really just like combine with that or um, you know just intermingle and it's it's fantastic I, I love that machining stuff and in all just to dumb it down a lot this is my own little machine shop now uh, after having these things in here and uh, I love it BOCES I go to BOCES for project based engineering which is um, a combination of engineering with precise or precision machining um, and I love it there and now I can bring it home and work on it here too so uh, it's it's exciting I love it um, and honestly like combining the lathe with some jewelry stuff I'm sure I could do a lot with that so stick around like subscribe to the video uh, or like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit that the bell. Uh, for some reason, I still don't understand the reason, obviously, because it's just been right after I filmed the outros of the other video. Um, if you haven't seen it, go back to my other videos on my channel. 
uh, watch that, get my views up, my, my watch time up, uh, please and thank you, do it right now. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.